Probiotics and Heart Health Can Probiotics Improve Cardiovascular Disease Risk Factors? Cardiovascular disease is quickly becoming one of the leading causes of deaths in North America. According to the Heart and Stroke Foundation, approximately 1.3 million Canadians are living with heart disease. Each year, more than 350,000 Canadians are hospitalized with heart disease and stroke, and up to 80% of premature heart disease and stroke is preventable by adapting a healthy lifestyle. In order to reduce the incidence of heart disease, doctors and researchers are working on understanding and mitigating risk factors associated with disease development. Two of the most common risk factors for heart disease are high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Recent studies have shown that probiotics, which are living m microorganisms that occur naturally in the body, are related to reducing heart disease risk factors such as high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Today, we'll talk about how probiotics might act on these factors. One of the most common risk factors for heart disease is high blood pressure. Over time, high blood pressure can strain the heart muscle and eventually cause it to weaken. Arteries, which are blood vessels that carry blood from our heart, can also be affected. Healthy arteries are strong and flexible and contain a smooth inner lining and supply blood to all vital organs. High blood pressure, however, can damage the inner lining and cause the arteries to stiffen and harden. This hardening can restrict blood flow to the brain and kidneys and cause failure of these organs. Blood pressure can actually be controlled through lifestyle modifications and diet. Lately, there has been an interest in probiotics as potential treatments for lowering blood pressure. A major mechanism of blood pressure regulation in our bodies is a renin-angiotensin system. A protein known as angiotensinogen gets converted to angiotensin 1 by an enzyme called renin. Angiotensin 1 that's con then gets converted to angiotensin 2 by another enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE. Angiotensin 2 is responsible for constricting the arteries and this causes the blood pressure to rise. Recent studies have shown that probiotics contain peptides which have potential to inhibit ACE, prevent constriction, and therefore lower blood pressure. The peptides are composed of either amino acid sequences, valine proline proline, or isoleucine proline proline, and are found in probiotic products such as cheese, fermented milk, and yogurt. In fact, a recent systematic review using meta-analysis of nine randomized controlled trials has shown that probiotic consumption had actually decreased systolic blood pressure when heart is at peak co contraction by 3.56 mm per mercury and decreased diastolic blood pressure when heart is completely relaxed by 2.38 mm per mercury compared to control groups. A greater improvement was observed in subjects who had already high blood pressure compared to subjects who had normal blood pressure. In addition to blood pressure, high cholesterol has also been linked to heart disease. Cholesterol is a major structural component of cell membranes and also serves as a precursor molecule for the production of important hormones in the body. The liver synthesizes most of our cholesterol, however it can also be consumed through food intake. Cholesterol is mainly comprised of fat molecules which are not able to travel freely in the bloodstream. In order to travel from one place in the body to the next, the fat molecules bind to carriers called lipoproteins. One of the most important types of lipoproteins when discussing heart health is the low-density lipoprotein or LDL. LDL is called low-density lipoprotein because LDL particles are less dense than other cholesterol particles. LDL cholesterol is considered bad cholesterol because high levels of this protein contribute to plaque buildup. Over time, plaque can narrow arteries, reduce blood flow, which can result in heart attack or stroke. Past studies have shown that consumption of probiotics is effective in improving lipid levels in the body, including the reduction of serum and plasma total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol. The cholesterol lowering effect of probiotics has been studied for many years and is thought to be attributed to their ability to bind cholesterol in the small intestine. Studies suggest that certain lactobacillus acidophilus strains could remove cholesterol when grown in culture medium under conditions similar those found in the intestine. These reports suggest that cholesterol could be removed by binding to the lactobacillus surface and as a result dietary cholesterol would be less available for absorption in the intestine. In a 2012 randomized controlled trial, researchers looked at patients with high cholesterol levels to observe the effects of lactobacillus ruteri bacteria in lowering LDL. In these patients, it was seen that those who took the probiotics had LDL levels 11.6% lower and total cholesterol levels 9.1% lower than those who did not 9 weeks after. In addition to the potential cardiovascular benefits of probiotics, research shows that there aren't any serious adverse effects that have been observed with probiotic use. Some side effects of probiotic use are short-term gas and bloating. Additionally, 
for immune system compromised patients, utilizing probiotics products are theorized to overstimulate the immune system, so it is important to consult your physician prior to use. Though we are still learning a lot about the benefits of taking probiotics, current research shows the significant potential in using probiotics to combat the development of cardiovascular disease by managing risk factors such as high blood pressure and LDL cholesterol we're one step closer when reducing the impact of heart disease. For more videos, please like, comment and subscribe to the McMaster Demystifying Medicine Series channel.